goodness! <laughs> oh boy. But wait, there's more. There she goes! Oh. We live for this, don't we? Also, Georgia, Texas, we live for that. Kansas City, San Francisco, we live for that. And could tonight be the night for the Liberty, or do the Lynx got another one in them? Let's go around the horn. When's the parade, Tony? Next Monday, Friday? Don't get ahead of yourself, Frank. You were we'll talking Subway Series two days ago, and look what happened there. Four swings last night, each bigger than the last. Judge, Stanton. But I'm going to unilaterally decree John Kenzie Noel's was best. David Fry wins the game. Noel saves a season. And 404 feet, get out of here. You can tell me that's 800 feet, I would believe it. Brian Anderson's call goes straight to the Broadcasting oh, Hall of Fame. Oh, oh my goodness! Big Christmas tied it! The <laughs> yeah. ultimate present under the tree! I just, love, I just love screaming. I love Christmas and I love screaming. There are moments and then there are momentous moments, monumentally changing everything. Clinton Yates around the horn to you. Did Noel. And that play from him and his nailer in the tenth. And David Fry just do that for Cleveland. Can the Yankees recover from this? Does any of it carry over, please, on this instant classic? Tone, follow me here. There is no scenario in which hitting a ball 900 feet nearly into the Cuyahoga River is luck. <laughs> However, the Guardians were very fortunate to be in that position to begin with. Really? I thought Vote made a couple of mistakes, and execution-wise on the field, they borderline gave that game away. They pitched to Soto, excuse me, they walked to Soto and pitched to mm -hmm. Judge. Yeah, I would have probably done that the other way around. They end up giving up back-to-back, -back, which should have been or could have been a backbreaker. And then they're running rundowns like Little League teams in the ninth inning. This this is how this is supposed to go. You throw ahead of the runner, you chase him back, one tag play, maybe it's second. That's all the risk you take. Instead, they're goofing this up, so they were even to be in that position at all. I thought it was a very fortunate situation, and they took advantage of it. Great night in Cleveland. Don't get me wrong, but I don't see that carrying over. I think I'm getting you wrong here. Too shaky You're too very focused parts. on a rundown in the ninth inning when, hello, there was a... Yeah, it, it drove me nuts. You cannot have that. I love that about that you. Can't I love that about you. But you're... <laughs> I think you're missing the big picture here. Someone might say you're not seeing the forest for the trees. Frank Isola, you're in New York. They're not exactly yeah. feeling that. Clinton, I'll get back to you. I'm sorry. But what, no. they're not exactly feeling that, that it was luck. They're feeling devastation. Yeah. Please, floor is yours. And, and Clinton, it's a results-oriented business. <laughs> and for Cleveland to get that win in a game that they had to have, you cannot fall back, you know, 0-3 in a series. They're not going to win. But to Cleveland's credit, and let's face it, when you watch them play, those of us here want a Subway Series, but come on now. The Cubs got their World Series. Boston has their World Series. You want, you, the part of you would like to see Cleveland do it, and a night like that is unbelievable. Mm. To me, the big takeaway, though, is the end of those bullpens. And Claus A only gave up two home runs in the regular season. He's now giving up three in the postseason. Mm -hmm, yeah. And Luke Weaver had been lights out. And then look what happened last night. That's why we talk all the time about the great Mariano Rivera. Those last six outs, especially those last three, are hard to get. Which closer are you going to count on from this point on? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Kevin Blackstone, bringing you in here. We've been talking about momentum in every series. Off the rails, up and down, up and down. Can a game like yesterday carry over for Cleveland? Absolutely it can. I'm amazed that Frank could even gather himself together to bring himself on to do the show today <laughs> after what happened. I mean, I was certain that that was a stake in the heart of the Cleveland franchise yeah. when Aaron Judge clobbered that mm -hmm, ball. Yeah. I, I walked away from the TV for a second and then looked down at my phone when I heard it buzz and said, what's going on? And rushed back and hit another one. Yeah, Un unbelievable. I mean, so I absolutely think that this can carry this can carry forward. Look, you talk about momentum. I mean, you saw those stands. You heard the call. You saw the reaction. That is real energy. At one point in this game, towards the end, they were done. All of a sudden, they got new life. You know you have a series now. It's not 3-0. three. It's not three zero. Mm -hmm. And so, absolutely, this can carry forward. For Woody, me. you know, some say momentum is the next day starting pitcher. Some say it's a real thing in this postseason. What say you about those two home runs to win last night? I don't see any hangover from the Yankees. When you got Luke Weaver, and as Frank pointed out, he's been sensational since he's been put into that role. He's won four yep. straight uh, uh, 
playoff games, and so he throws a changeup. Don't throw a changeup. I'm watching all these baseball <laughs> series, and I go, pitchers, do not throw a changeup, because that always go, just floats in over the plate. <laughs> I believe that the Yankees don't have a hangover. They're going to come back. Cleveland got its opportunity. Last night took advantage mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be shut out in this series. They're not going to be posted away. Uh, this is the 27th uh, playoff game that they've had together, and Cleveland has at least won 12 of the 27, but the Yankees have dominated them in the previous times they were together. I just think the Yankees are going to come back and, and make this uh, shorter series. No, okay, wow. I wasn't Just on the change, that is a great pitch for Luke Weaver, and batters against his change this year are hitting under 120, and John Kenzie Noel, who's a rookie and only has 39 hits all season, doesn't hit the change up all season, but that was one that he got. you got to give credit. To a batter every now and then. Clinton Yates, I'll bring you back in. Absolutely. And my thing with this Guardians team is that I just feel Vote has not put them in the best positions. You can have your players bail you out. Tremendous performances are tremendous performances. That's what makes the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But I just don't feel that the way he's managed this series, he's been a little panicky on certain things. And they almost, almost gave another one away, away last night. All right, let's make some picks now. Uh, Momentum is the next day's starting pitcher or the next panelist. Go ahead, Franco Solo. Who you got? You, you know what? The, the Yankees are still the better team. But one thing about the pinstripes and the history, this group has never won before. So that'll give Cleveland some hope. Yankees win tonight. Kevin Blackstone, who you got? Well, Lewis Gill has been unhittable, Eel, right? Yeah. But now, as a rookie, he's going to have pressure mm -hmm. on him in a playoff game, not to let this thing get away. In, in the a last while. time. Exactly. And last time he played Cleveland, gave up a few hits and gave up a bunch of walks. Sounds like so you look got out the Guardians that. tonight. Clint Yates, I do. you? I think Booney and the Yanks know that they let one get away and they'll get it back. And we know Woody's got the New York steamrolling. One more thing on Cleveland. This is a proud franchise that hasn't won in 70 years, right? And they had one of the most, fa they had one of the greatest home runs in baseball history <laughs> in game seven of a World Series, Roger Davis, I'm talking about. And they didn't win that game. For them that to ball. get a great home run and then finish it off with another home run, that was great to see. We've been horned, we'll move on. College football, let's go. Let me hear it, National Battle. College! College! Another game of the year of the week. Number five, Georgia. Number one, Texas. Will the Horns assert dominance? Ken's into the SEC, and right now they're the top team in the country. And Georgia once replaced <laughs> Alabama as the team in the SEC. Texas is now doing it. But Georgia to win two things to look out for. You know, they only have five takeaways in six games, and they average 71 yards a game in penalties. If you can't get turnovers and you're making mistakes with penalties, you're not going to be Texas. And let's give Steve Sarkeesian a lot of credit. He has done an unbelievable job thus far at Texas. Georgia, you could still get in with two losses, but it better be a quality mm. performance tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what, that's what I want to get down on right now, Kevin Blackiston. What's on the line? Can Georgia afford another loss? I don't think they can afford a level, another loss, even with uh, what we know is the new playoff situation. Mm. Um, and, and the thing is, is you know, they're going into a t to play a team in Texas that really hasn't beaten anybody this year, a bad Michigan team. We know they absolutely destroyed Oklahoma. Oklahoma's not that good. They've got everything to prove. But this is one of the top offenses in the country. Mm. Georgia is not quite lighting it up. And not only that, Georgia's defense right now is suffering. Let's look at how good this team has been, has been lately because of all the draft choices that they've lost to the NFL. And now you look at the stats in the SEC, and Georgia's not even in the top five of some critical stats in the, in the SEC. So I see Texas winning this game, holding on to that number one spot, and then Georgia and their fans having to sweat it out to see if they can get in with two Clint Yates, around the horn of you. I just... I want to give Sarkeesian a little bit more credit than just having turned around that program. He would arguably be the face of college football if Deion Sanders wasn't walking this earth in Colorado right now for what he's done with that legacy program and how he's brought them back to legitimately being the best team in the country. That said, I think there's a lot to be said for this game in terms of style elements because with the new format, you're going to have teams that have a fair amount of losses and you've got to wonder, what do you actually look like within the games beyond just the numbers? And I think that's where Georgia's going to have a problem if they get down in this early you know even if they don't lose by a huge margin it's going to look really bad for them so that defensive Texas they had a bunch of negative plays last week in terms of defensively they had five sacks they can do this but I think how the game is played will be as important to the playoff picture as just what the mm. result is because Sark's been doing a great job Frank I'll bring you back in here on the idea of style I go to you for style Frank Isola 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's funny. I, I, I like how you could be the face of college football when you've never won anything. I find that pretty interesting. <laughs> but, Kevin, you, you're talk, I, I, guess, I guess you're not going to go to Austin, Texas anytime soon. They haven't beaten anybody. What do you want them to do? They've dominated the teams that they've played. This, this team right now, the way they are offensively, they are too tough. And if they wipe out Georgia tomorrow, watch out. Maybe. Ewers, great quarterback, depth at quarterback. They won't even need it. Two, two-headed running attack, yep. which is outstanding. Georgia's not running the ball that well. Their defense is, has gotten soft, and I just think that this is going to be Texas's year, and this is going to certainly be Texas's All right, Woody Page, you've been so patient. Please, now, what's on the line in this matchup? <laughs> yeah, what do you a, got? It's about time to get to me <laughs> so you can get the actual <laughs> facts here. Uh, <laughs> Texas is only giving up 3.6 yards per play. That's the starting point. That defense is going to go against a team that has not been that good offensively. And I, I go back to a game that Georgia won against Kentucky. Really? Kentucky's not a very good team, and now you're going to go to Texas and face that offense that they have? Uh, the SEC is concerned about Texas coming into its conference from somewhere else and dominating as it has been this season. So I yeah, think yeah, it's I, a situation like when you've that. got a great all. There, there are three quarterbacks on the sidelines Saturday, and two of them play for Texas. So I have to give the, the Texas the heavy advantage. They've won by more than 15 points in every game. Yates, last word season. after the one. They're going to keep it up. All I'm saying is. I was there when they lost to Kansas at home. It wasn't that long ago. To bring that program back to where they are is a huge deal. A loss Trust brings me. you it back? Was not like that recently. The last time no. Evo and Uga met, by the way, we all know what happened, but we're going to show it to you again. Uh, Love Uga. But the new Uga <laughs> won't be there tomorrow. Quote, this dog hasn't been on a plane yet, hasn't been on a bus yet. He's really young and immature and crazy as hell. <laughs> and this game just wasn't a good fit good. for us. Leave the dog alone. Taking a break by ourselves. Tough there. matchup. Yeah. Tough matchup for Uga. You want to go in. Whipping around the NFL weekend. Lions, Vikings, good old fashioned who you got. NFC North edition. Detroit's first game without Aiden Hutchinson. Minnesota putting their never trailing for all but three minute streak on the line. Here, coming off a of bye. Clinton, will we know who's best in the division from this outcome and who you got? I don't know that we'll know that, but I got the Vikes. I think the Hutchinson loss is real in the right now in terms of the defense of the Lions. And Darnold, a great case for my theory, worst coach position in the league. He gets into a new situation, gets a little experience. He's really playing. I want to see if he's going to, you know, turn back into a pumpkin. I don't think he will. I think this team is pretty good, and the Vikes are going to get it done. Woody Page? Uh, this game is not going to determine the most dominant team in that division. That division against the NFL after six games is 17-5 and five against the rest of the NFL. That is the highest percentage through six games since the merger. So mm -hmm. those teams still have so many games against each other left that we're not going to decide this till late in the season. And who you got in this one, Woody? Oh, I've got the Vikings. Coming off a of bye week, they're going to win. Mm -hmm. Kevin Blackstone? Yeah, I like the Vikings, too. I don't know if that'll determine whether or not they're the best team in this division, but I think they're certainly going to put a down payment on it. Look, 15.2 uh, points per game is what they're giving up. That's, that's really tough. And the other thing is, is that even though their offense isn't off the charts, they're really good in the red zone, fifth in percentage in that, 27 points a game on offense. That's so if I was asking to pick a unit, you'd take the Vikings defense over Def oh, Detroit's absolutely. offense here. Frank Isola, absolutely. can you start there? Uh, Sam Darnold is a, is a great story. He's the best Jets quarterback right now in the NFL, but I'm looking at the other quarterback, Jared Goff. <laughs> Detroit has put up 89 points in their last two games. That's the most they've ever done since 1962. Also, Goff, Tony, I know you love stats. He completes 70% of his passes on blitzes. Minnesota loves to get after the mm, quarterback. I do yeah, love that. I do love that piece of information. And that's how you have this game being decided, it sounds like. Texans Packers, a good old-fashioned who you got QB edition here. Frank, C.J. Stroud or Jordan Love? I'll take either one, but if I had to pick, I'll take Jordan Love for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you look at their numbers from this year, they're comparable. But Jordan Love went on the road and won a, a playoff game, and then he had San Francisco on the ropes. This guy is special in Detroit. I'm sorry, Green Bay seems to know what they're doing with quarterbacks. Clint Yates, who you got? 
I'll take Stroud. If you look at the numbers, as Frank would say, Stroud has completed as many passes as Love has attempted. So for me, he's just a guy that's in a better rhythm, and that team, I think, is better, too. Woody Page? He's got Dion. Clinton, has Stroud ever been to Green Bay in that environment, playing against Love, and you say, Frank says, comparable statistics. One of the guys Ohio hasn't State. played all the games this year, and he still has the same numbers as Stroud does. I, I got Green Bay all and over KB, this one. And KB, Stroud or Love? Texans team had oh, it's got to be Love. Love is tied for second in touchdowns right now with, with 12. They're high on the list when it comes to explosive plays with 55 so far. Not only that, I think they're three for their last three against this Texans team. So that's got I to hope you think that. Favorite. That's true, but I would prefer a Thank little more conviction much. when you're giving your stats here, KB. <laughs> Kansas City, San Francisco Super Bowl rematch. Don't need to say any more. KB, how is this game won? It's going to be one with Andy Reid. You know what Andy Reid does in, after bye weeks? He always wins. He will coach you this like team that to a Frank Isola. Well, those two Super Bowls, San Francisco has a fourth quarter lead. What happens in both of them? They lose. Can their defensive line get to the great Patrick Mahomes? Kyle Shanahan, by the way, has never beaten Andy Reid. Glenn Yates. Got to squeeze the air out of the ball if you're the Niners. Just because you don't have the big guy doesn't mean you can't run it. Time of possession is critical. If San Francisco thinks they can win this game, I don't think they will. I think the Chiefs won. And Woody Page. Yeah, I have seven points I'd like to make here, Tony. <laughs> I'll start off with this. That last year, Chris Jones uh, decimated mm -hmm. 49ers. Yep, yeah, that's They're not going to let that happen again. Uh, I think the Chiefs have struggled in every game this year. They don't mm -hmm. look like a championship okay, team that's right where the now. And the 49ers are, have changed to become a running offense mm -hmm. once again. All right, uh, better be quicker here, Woody. That Shannon horn's coming. To his son. <laughs> <laughs> I think that what they're running game, this, this is... Woody, you've been using that same line for 22 years. Still works. It didn't work. But no, no, the merger. With the line <laughs> thank you, Terrell. Have a great weekend. Ice, thank you. Clinton Yates, Kevin Blackstone. That's our showdown next. Clinton Yates, Kevin Blackstone, good luck in showdown. News of the week and of the preseason from college basketball, the stunning retirement of Tony Bennett. This is three weeks before the season starts. Today, he said he's thought about it since the end of last year, yet he signed an extension this summer, and that he's now retiring, saying the game is not in a healthy spot and there needs to be change. The position Virginia finds itself in now is <laughs> they have a coach starting again three weeks before the season starts. How did this land for you, Clint Yates? Didn't land well for me at all. It seemed oddly duplicitous for a guy who's had kind of a nice guy reputation his entire career, and now the kids are stuck on the roster, and he's complaining about the state of the game. You were coaching at Virginia. It's not as if they were doing a whole ton of stuff around NIL and all of that anyway, and you still managed to have a good program. This, to me, is a weird note to go out on for a guy who is generally pretty liked around the country in terms of college basketball, for sure. Kevin Blackestone. Well, I think he should have apologized to all the players on his team who he's leaving in the lurch, um, to the AD there who now has to figure out what to do, to all the fans of that program who've been rooting him on. And to say that the game is not in a healthy place, the game is, is in a healthier place than it's ever been right now because the laborers who've made everybody rich, in ter in, including giving him the ability to earn $3 million for coaching college basketball, are finally starting to get their due and get treated um, equitably in this game. Assistant coach Ron Sanchez takes over, which may be part of this conversation. Maybe that's what Bennett wanted. Part yeah. of it, you could be a very nice guy and you can make a decision here that really puts people, as you said, uh, somebody in the lurch, right? And, th and that's what yep. the, yeah. how, how will you remember him as a guy who won a championship and as a guy who also lost as a one seed to a 16, but maybe now also as a guy who retired three weeks before a season starts. One more topic here tonight, New York Liberty. The game after the shot. Do they get the first championship in franchise history tonight? Or can Minnesota stave and force a game five in New York Sunday night? Clint Yates around the horn to you. I think it's going to be the Lynx. Alana Smith is going to be back when she was injured in that last game. It seemed like the Liberty capitalized that. And also, the Lynx have so much championship experience on that bench. They're not going out like that. KB. 
I got the liberty. I mean, I think they clawed their way back into this uh, series with the blowout in the basic blowout in game two and the win like they did the other night. I was watching that game and just trying to figure out when are they going to claw their way back into this game, and they well, certainly yes. did. Yes, I don't win. know if it, was, if it was a blowout in game two. They've all been tight, and I think this is a five-game yeah. series. Let's give it. I want to give a shout-out to the Iowa State Cyclones and specifically the Greenlee School of Journalism and Communication. They invited me out there a couple weeks ago to speak to their class because they have a new sports media major that they are starting off with. That school has three teams in the top ten. Football and both basketball teams are getting it done. And something I didn't learn until I got there. They've never had a ten-win season. That's unbelievable to me. Between Seneca Wallace and Brock Purdy, it's never happened. I hope